Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals learn how to get the most out of Power BI. So welcome to the next video. And now in this video, I'm going to talk about a donut chart. And I'm going to show you how to set up the chart, a few hints and tips on how best to configure the chart. And I'm going to talk you through a, a neat little example that I've got where we can combine it with a card to create a, a reasonably effective visual. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to go and add in a donut chart. Let's crack on with this. And I'll populate it with some data. And the first thing I'm going to do is, um, even with just this example here actually, I'm going to talk through a few, a few guidelines. So first of all, a donut chart, it is like a pie chart. So you've got a segment, it's circular, and you've got a segment that represents each category value. And um, the data that it represents must be this, the, the parts of a whole, okay? So if you've got a total backlog, then each one of those is a, a part of that backlog. It, it's a bit like one of these 100% st stacked columns, or a, a, one col a single column from a 100% stacked chart, twisted and, and joined at the edges, really. And so let's add some data into it. Um, we'll start off by looking at the, the field wells. So we've got a legend, we've got some details, we've got the values and we've got the tooltip. So the value we're going to look at here is going to be the work order count. So let's add that into values. So straight away we can see what, what that is. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is how not to use the, 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 the legend. Now Let's go and add in this discipline here. Now, what's happened here, and this is this is an example. Same apply, same rules apply to a pie chart, where we've just got far too much um, values in the category. You know, we've got all of these values here, and they're all kind of squeezed up into this section here. We've kind of got a couple of values, three values here that make up a big a big chunk of the data, but the rest of it is pretty much illegible in amongst here. Um, and, and that is how not to use one of these. It's really difficult for this to compare these values. The much better approach would be to use something like um, one of these. You know, you can clearly see, or even one of these, um, you can clearly see the, the difference and you can compare them and you can see the, the values here and you can add labels, etc. So if you've got above, I would say, three, maybe four, then you're, you're looking at and you want to be able to carry out a comparison, then I would highly recommend that you start using some sort of bar chart, okay, either vertical or horizontal. So let's go back to our donut chart, and the same applies for the pie chart. It just makes it far too difficult to kind of try and match these up. Um, on top of that, we also do find it really difficult from a brain interpretation point of view, or a cognitive point of view, to make comparisons with these angular um, Angular sections here, okay, make accurate comparisons. So let's um, let's go and change this to something slightly better. So let's go and say I wanted to look at this work type, so the type of maintenance work. So remember, this is a count of the backlog, count of the number of work orders in a backlog. So let's go and change that in here, and we can see it's slightly better. We can see these are roughly about 40%, that's 40%, 42%, 40%, and we've got kind of the others in here, still squeezed it together. Um, so even even at six, it's, it's I would not recommend it. It's, it's looking a little bit squeezed there. And um, so what I've done is I've gone and I've said, well, okay, okay, what we actually want to understand is, are we being more preactive? Are we executing more preactive work? Um, more reactive work than pre um, reactive work in our backlog. What do we have? So if we go and uh, I've created a calculated column here called proactive reactive. So all I've done here is use a switch statement. And if this work type here is either a BR or a PSCM, then we're going to label that as reactive. Otherwise, it's proactive. So we've only got two categories there or two two values, two values in the category. So let's pull that into here and get rid of that. So now we can see it's looking a lot cleaner and we've just got the two and really you just want to get a feel for how much 
reactive and proactive work have we got in a backlog? So in a backlog, we've got quite a lot of proactive work. And that proactive work is, is, is designed to stop us being equipment failing and stop us from carrying out reactive work. So it's not really a good situation to have a lot of this work overdue. Um, and then we've got this 10% year of work that's reactive. So that's the first thing. Now, what we've also got here is this detail. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm going to show you how it works. If you do want to break this down into additional detail, then let's pull the work type into there. Now what's done is rather than add the work type to this legend here, the detail just splits it into sections. Okay, so you can start to see what the different types are and you can actually add in, I think, if you go into the labels and if you select all detail, you'll be able to see it directly in here. So you, if you did have a situation where you did want to be able to see, well look, this is all of the reactive work and the reactive work is CMs, PMs, and project work. Again, you, you can't quite see it there, um, for what this one is. Then you, you can use that details field well here. Okay, But I'm going to take it out of there because I just want to use this one here. So let's look at some of the other options for setting up. Uh, we can put the legend on or off. I would say if we go into, and I've already looked at this label style, you can choose just to show the category, you can choose the data value, you can choose pretty much any combination. Now if you put all detailed label, all, all detail labels, so you've got, if it's proactive or reactive, you've got the number and you've got the percentage. Now that's another advantage here that we've got for this, um, this donut chart, is that it calculates the percentage of the total for each of the segments as well as the actual count. Okay, and then it labels it up automatically. So that's, that's, that's really useful because it saves you having to add additional measures and um, you get it all in, in, in the one place. So we would definitely recommend that. And again, you can you can change the size and you can change the position if you want it to be in the inside or on or set, set the preference. Uh, I will prefer outside, okay, for just now. And, um, and you can put this text overflow if you want on. And all that means is if it's on the inside, it means that it, it's quite happy to overflow out with the kind of parameters of, of here. You can see it's, it's just overflowed slightly in this um, this area here. So again, if you're happy enough to have that on, and I would have it on if you're going to if you're going to use this approach, then make sure this overflow text is switched on as well. Okay, so the background. Well, we're talking about uh, the background here to this labels here. So that is only shown. If you choose inside, if you choose outside, you can't use the, the background. But if you choose inside, you can choose to, to have it auto, and I guess that'll, that'll just depend on the colours. Or you can have it off, in which case it's just going to be transparent. No, that's fine, unless you've got white as one of these options here. I think that looks a little bit better for me there. Um, if you're going to use this option, but I actually prefer to have it outside for just now. Um, right, so then look at shapes. So this radius here, the size of this radius can be selected using this slider here, and you can make it smaller. I mean, that's a pie chart essentially, so we don't want that just now. But I quite like, I think it's quite well sized at 60. It's a kind of, it's a kind of halfway house for it still looks like a bar that's been folded on on itself and doesn't look, look too much like a pie chart. where you've got this big block of color, which I think is the, the, the downfall of a pie chart. Um, so that, that looks pretty good, but you can change it if you need to. So. Yeah, and then the title is pretty much, um, in the background, etc., are pretty much the same as um, all the other visuals. So those are the options you've got for configuring, or the key options you've got for configuring up the this um, this donut chart. So let's look at pairing the donut chart along with a card. Now the big disadvantage for a donut chart is that you can't actually see the total. Okay, so this space in the middle is just begging for there to be a number. And to do that, let's just show you very roughly. And um, it does take a little bit of format and it can be a little bit a little bit fiddly, it's not too bad. But essentially what we're gonna do is turn this into a card and we're gonna go and put that card in the middle here. Now we don't need the category, so let's get rid of the category from the card. And we'll make it slightly smaller. And as long as it just fits nicely in the middle there, 
and you might need to sort of, you might need to um, just play with the, the position in there. Now, once you've done that, if you select this and then hold down Control, and then you've got the two of them there. If you right click, you've got the two of these selected now. If you right click Group, and now you've got these as a group, and that can be a little bit easier when you're moving it about. Um, and then there's a few formatting options here. You can switch off the um, the title if you need to. Um, now. That's obviously made it a little bit, um, you need to ungroup that again. So like I say, there is a little bit of messing about here you need to do just to make this number fit nicely in the middle there. We can make this a little bit smaller. And here we go. Okay, so once you've got that and you're happy with that, then that can be a useful addition to a visual where there perhaps you're, you're limited for space and you want to make use of some of the real estate around about a single card just to add a little bit of an extra dimension and of course this lets you filter as well as see the, the total value. So here's an example that a practical example that I have just um, put together. Um, this one here we've got the this this dashboard, if you want to create this dashboard, I've got a course that talks you through the through actually pulling it together and how to configure it. Um, so check the link below if you're interested in creating this dashboard. But what we've got here is we've got two cards that show the total backlog. So the number of work orders and the hours. Now we've got the priority, we've got how old it is, we've got who the, who's going to be executing the work, the department and the discipline, we've got uh, the, the, the criticality of the work, if it's safety, etc. But with nothing in here that's going to tell us if it's proactive or reactive. So what I'm going to do here, or what I've done, is I've created two donut charts with these values in the centre and we're going to use the, the circumference as a differentiate, or the circumference to indicate the, the split of the reactive and the proactive work. And I'm not going to go into the detail, I mean it's fairly straightforward, you just need to add a card and stick it in the middle. Um, the, like I say, there is a little bit of um, a little bit of configuration there, but you just um, you just have to play with that yourself and, and, and mess about with it. It's not technically complicated, it's just a little bit a little bit annoying sometimes. But once you've done it, it looks pretty cool. And we can see here we've got that number, it's slightly smaller, I've reduced the size of it, but I don't think it impacts the dashboard in any way. And then we can see now just Reactive, 10% um, of the work is reactive in terms of the count and just under 12% is reactive in terms of the actual the man hours. And that's the work we've got in our backlog, outstanding work. Of course this is a filter as well, so you can filter that. It's going to impact all of the different um, all the, all the other visualizations on the screen. So just a, a practical example of where a, a donut chart with a, a card can be paired together to create a visual that might be useful in some situations particularly if you're using a low number of categories, like we've got here, just two, and you're maybe sort of wanting to um, add a little bit of extra um, comparison for not a, a, a hell of a lot of additional real estate. Okay, so thanks for listening, and if you like this video, it would, um, it would help me out a lot if you could give it a thumbs up, and if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then of course press the subscribe button, and click the wee bell to get a notification. I release a video around about every week, and if you're interested in learning more about Power BI, check out the courses in the links below. I've got some additional resources as well. And of course, you can download this um, this file from the, the link in the, in the description. So thanks again for listening, and I'll talk to you in the next video.